Hello everyone and welcome back to WWE 12 Universe. My name is Jitch and this is SmackDown. The Stone Cold Champions Gauntlet continues now. got a facelift and looks a little bit more like himself just a, a bit old <laughs> now and incredibly incredibly in shape not that he wasn't before but my god <laughs> it's chiseled stone cold steve austin set to go one-on-one -on -one with the wwe tag team champion kofi kingston after he beat evan bourne last week so far he has beat the cruiserweight champion of smackdown zack Ryder, the ecw champion who is currently home to smackdown Wade Barrett and the WWE Tag Team Champion Evan Bourne. If he beats Kofi Kingston tonight, it will be the Miz, the, the Intercontinental Champion next week. And then uh, in two weeks' time, if he's able to beat the Miz, it will be the WWE Champion Christian one-on-one. -on -one, the title he's been gunning for, the thing that he has said this is all for in the first place. Just wants to prove that he can beat every champion on SmackDown first. <clears throat> Kofi Kingston with a brand new WWE Tag Team title belt just been made this week. SmackDown has decided to have a little bit of a facelift for one of its belts. For anyone that's curious, because I know this is going to be a question that's going to spring to some people's mind, I can already see it in the stars. Some people may be wondering, are you going to use every title as it's introduced are you gonna redo the intercontinental belt to be the white strap are you gonna use the universal title etc etc no not everything that's gonna be introduced is gonna be introduced it's just that i don't honestly mind the like penny belts as people call them i don't mind them i just don't think that both brands needed identical versions of them i don't like the colored straps like it, i'm not really a big fan of like the copper color but I do like the um, the original ones that I've now given Kingston Bourne. I just don't, I don't really like the like kind of bronzy, coppery color that they they were in. Um, I won't change it. I'll leave it alone. Actually, I don't think you can change it um, in the belt editors until like 16 or something. Um, it's just that if they are always the belts that are here on SmackDown, I might. Um, I might, I'm trying to think of what I'm trying to say here, sorry. Um, I might um, just change them for the blue straps with the silver bits on them in the future when those are the belts. But the raw ones are going to stay as the ones that they currently are because I really like the World Tag Titles. I was just never that keen on the uh, SmackDown version, the WWE Tag Team Titles, so I just thought, well, they can go, that's fine. Austin counters it. Um, I apologize if that disappoints anybody though. But like the under the, the universal title, fuck no. We are keeping the world heavyweight championship. That I am telling you now. It's a bit like we're not getting rid of the brand split ever. It is too good of an idea to get rid of. But yeah, we will, we will be keeping the big gold belt for as long as possible. The W title. I won't say we'll stay as the spinner belt forever, but I won't say that it will just go forward to the new belts. It may change every year. I haven't quite decided yet. Anyway, um, speaking of SmackDown here tonight, since we're on the show, I might as well give you guys a rundown of what we've got here tonight. Um, interesting card for you, actually. Um, we're going to be seeing... Um, we're going to be seeing uh, I'll get the words out eventually sorry three three more matches tonight as per the usual up next the WWE champion Christian is in action as he goes in a non-title rematch from Extreme Rules um, with the former WWE champion Shawn Michaels just so we can see if Michaels could have perhaps beaten Christian if it weren't for the cheap shot those two are going to be facing off that should be a great match 
as that comes your way next. Um, match number three, the original contender for the W title, Undertaker, has confirmed that he feels at least ready to compete here on SmackDown tonight and eventually get that W title opportunity that he was robbed of. So he's going to be going one-on-one -on -one with a debuting star here on SmackDown. I look forward to seeing who that's going to be. And then in our main event tonight, we have got... Um, the two of SmackDown's finest to offer as uh, John Cena returns to action uh, to go one-on-one -on -one with the, uh, the the last number one contender for the Intercontinental title, The Rock. That is our main event. <coughs> tell you what, Kofi Kingston, he's, he's given Austin a good fight, and I like that. I think Austin likes that too, to be honest. Starting to feel that rise through the champions. No disrespect to Evan Bourne, but I guess this just means that maybe Kofi is the better one between the two. There's always got to be a Genetti in a team, you know? A, you can't not have a Genetti. It's just the rules. Well, this could be the beginning of the end for Kofi Kingston in this one. We could be wrapping this match up. Managed to get all that Stone Cold Stunner. And Kofi Kingston with a second wind. And those repeated blows to the skull have Gotta respect it for what it is. Neck breaker by Austin, who's already hit that stunner, though. He's trying to get the victory now, but... Okay, I guess the stunner still had its damage done to Kofi, to be fair. Austin wipes his hand into the tag team champions as he now looks forward next week to facing the intercontinental champion, The Miz. This rise through the ranks has been nothing but success so far for Stone Cold Steve Austin next week. Just one of the last two champions to face. However, The Miz is the most prestigious champion, whether you like him or not, and that's gonna be a tough one to top. Well done though to Stone Cold Steve Austin for continuing the champion's gauntlet in a successful fashion. Oh, here's John Cena who's uh, apparently wanted to talk Five days ago, SmackDown saw a potential WWE Championship match go out the window. And Christian, as much of a pathetic excuse of a champ you are, I've got your back. What I'm saying is, Christian is innocent. He had nothing to do with what happened to The Undertaker. How do I know? Because, Taker, it was me. You punked me out in our contenders match a few weeks ago. You're afraid of me, Taker. You should be. That's why I'm laying down this challenge. Once I'm done with Dacre, watch your back, Christian. Your days as champ are numbered. So come on already, dead man. Face me. <laughs> I don't think he was actually expecting Undertaker to- Oh my god. I don't think Cena was expecting this. <laughs> wow. Well, we're a little bit in shock at what John Cena just had to say about um, The Undertaker. Definitely not a person I would have expected to have been the guy, but at least he came out and said it, I guess. Christian said he would do whatever it takes to survive his first title defense and he attacked Shawn Michaels from behind but he declared I am innocent in the situation surrounding The Undertaker. I had nothing to do with it and now he gets to come out here tonight and uh, suddenly the fans seem to have forgotten that he ambushed Shawn Michaels because suddenly they're on his side again. The guy's still a bit of a dirty rotten cheater when it comes to defending the title but he didn't attack a guy in a parking lot so I guess now it's fine. <laughs> Christian, the WWE Champion, except for non-title action against Shawn Michaels, who he defeated five days ago. Very quickly, very underwhelmingly, I must say. A lot of people disappointed in the outcome of that match. You know, obviously disappointed that The Undertaker didn't get his title shot, but John Cena coming out and admitting that it was him that took out The Undertaker because he wanted, he wanted respect. It was an eye for an eye, as far as Cena was concerned, after he was attacked by The Undertaker. Oh, I've got to 
fix all the call names for tag teams. Shawn Michaels of D-Generation X set for this one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be a tough opponent. I can't believe I forgot that they did fucking... I think this was the year, wasn't it? It was like 12 or one of them where like they didn't bother with entrance attires and stuff in the DLCs. The DLCs were like really half-assed. I want to say there's more than just the entrance attire being missing that was up with the DLC this year. I remember 12. I think it was 12. It was just... There was some really amazing shortcuts taken because they just didn't really seem to give a shit about the DLC. Oh, what was it? A bit like the Bella Twins are part of the DLC, but the Bella Twins entrance isn't there. As an example. Um... Just off the top of my head. I can't think of like loads to be honest actually, but I remember that like those those are two examples that I've recently had to deal with because I've been setting up the tag team entrances and stuff and I had to give them like lay cools or something because they completely removed it from the game. Alright, well Shawn Michaels now looking to get some retribution after five days ago where he was attacked from behind by Christian. No major damage is done. I think it was more or less just the uh I guess the shock factor of being ambushed by um, Christian that really threw him off his game, so to speak. The Undertaker set to go one-on-one -on -one with a debuting star up next, and he's going to have John Cena's uh, words kind of rattling through his brain as he goes into that matchup. I feel sorry for whoever's going to be making their debut. They're not going to be dealing with a version of Undertaker that anybody should want to. Christian in very firm control. A lot of people coming for Christian in the WWE title. You got The Undertaker as the original contender, who still hasn't had his shot, which means he's definitely suitable for it. Shawn Michaels, who's been robbed of a rematch that he was handed, so, uh, you know, he's not getting one because he was handed it, but, you know, he, he definitely wants some justice after what happened on Friday, and that's exactly what he's looking to get here. You've got John Cena, who's now doing whatever it takes to get a shot at the WWE title, including f trying to confront The Undertaker. He seems to have cowered it out of it a little bit, which is very unusual for the kind of character that I imagine John Cena to be. Um, uh, you know, you've got The Rock facing Cena tonight. If he wins, I'm sure he's going to start saying he wants a shot at the WWE title. Undertaker, Cena, Michaels. Oh, man. What impact from that suplex? It's definitely not an easy situation for Christian to be in. I keep thinking I'm Christian, and that's why I was just walking to the back there. I'm sorry about that. Christian. And obviously Stone Cold Steve Austin, I forgot to mention. He's going through this champion's gauntlet in, in the attempt that once he's won it all, he'll get a WWE title nice opportunity. You couldn't really be in a worse situation when you're Christian. You've got so many people gunning for your WWE title. Eventually, that whole running in from behind and attacking them thing, that ain't going to cut it. That ain't going to work. The Heartbreak Kid is feeding off the WWE Universe. Workman like fist by Christian. Oh, big move off the check. We're out of night, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit awkward. Thousands of fans will witness an incredible. As was all of those strike attempts. I like the shading in this game. It's a little strange. I I feel a little sad for the referee as he doesn't get any of it. <laughs> but it's like it's good, but it's not great. But there's something about it that's like it's only in this game that I think it's like that, and it, for that reason alone, it kind of stands out. I think the reason why W12 always amazes me to play, um, again, especially when it comes to universe and stuff and not just the story mode, is because I didn't originally have an HD capture card when I played WWE 12. I didn't have any kind of HD output when I was playing WWE 12, so to see it in this quality is just strange to me, because I was playing the game in 480p. Such a huge difference, obviously. But I went all of the calendar year of W12 from like January to 
November um, or October, whichever one it was, playing um, in 480p. I think it was like halfway through uh, 13 that I actually managed to get my new capture card. I keep forgetting that Sean Michaels doesn't do springboards. That just really throws me off every time. What do you think Christian needs to do now, King? Michaels is absolutely dominating Christian in this one. And again, got that signature, so get ready for them to go into panic mode. He gets out of trouble there. I mean, I get it. If they prevent me from hitting my signature, then I get a weakened version of the finisher, which isn't nearly as good. So, I mean, there is that reasoning, I suppose. It's just crazy. It's like they're, they're, it like, literally gives away the fact that they're not trying. <laughs> Because they can put up a fight, because they do the moment I get it. Nice reversal. Christian with a quick knee to the gut as Shawn Michaels and him tie up. Not this. Oh, the wow. Out of nowhere. Right on the, nose. the WWE champion with a kill switch, and he doesn't even go for the pin off of it. What is this all about? Oh, there you go. He thinks he has it. One. Very strange uh, Got the arm up. change of mind there by Christian. Not the kind of thing I think he'd, Man, he'd do. And again, the mind games are played. Well, Michael's trying to give a nice shout out to DX. Oh, look Being at a this. DX as a tag team, I think Michael's it's about to... time that the Altitude Man, Alliance the defended precision. next week. It'd be interesting to see who would step up to the challenge, but I think that they should definitely defend their tag titles next week. And ladies and gentlemen, that was vintage Michaels. Michaels is rolling. Sean Michaels top rope. Whoa! And that's it. Damage to the torso. All the pain that's been dealt appears to have finally taken it. Christian now back in control, the WWE champion. As I say, he's got that do as he must attitude. Careful, careful. Oh, calling. Oh, that's he's usually done. a setup. Look at the way he's holding his skull, King. His brains have been absolutely. His brain. Slim. A veteran maneuver there by Shawn Michaels. And ladies and gentlemen, that was vintage Michaels. HBK's feeling it. Oh, roll up here by Shawn Michaels. I mean, by Christian, even. Oh, don't start. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh -oh. Okay, well, that whatever. That works. Kill switch engaged, as they used to say. Connected with that one. Here's the cover on Shawn Michaels. And Christian, the WWE Champion, okay, undisputably now, beating Shawn Michaels. Why couldn't he have just done that at Extreme Rules? He would have had so much more respect in his corner if he had. <clears throat> well, the WWE Champion is victorious, and up next, The Undertaker is set for singles competition against a debuting superstar. Well, we already heard this music earlier tonight, as he confronted John Cena after Cena had admitted what he had done to The Undertaker. And I don't know if it was because he was jumped almost, you know, not jumped in the sense of attack, but surprised by the Undertaker appearing behind him or what. Seen a coward out of the ring. Something we've never seen him do. two-time and the first ever World Heavyweight Champion, The Undertaker, coming down to the ring tonight to face off against a debuting star. Someone has had the misfortune of being told on their first night on the job, you've got to go out there and you've got to face a two-time World Champion. You've got to face the first World Champion. I mean, obviously, if they can get that victory over The Undertaker... That's going to be uh, an extremely good thing for them. Their career could really benefit from that. But can they be The Undertaker? 
it's great to see him recover so quickly after being laid out in the parking lot Sunday night. No one knew how long the Undertaker would be out for, what even happened to him. There was no security footage or anything. And for John Cena to come out and admit it, you know, as cowardly of a, of a, of a person he behaved once the Undertaker arrived, it was pretty bold to come out and just say that he was the one that did it. But then he, he was challenging the Undertaker. He said he wanted him to come down to the ring. He wanted that match. And for a moment, he had it. All he had to do was actually fight rather than cower out of the ring. But for some reason, John Cena, he couldn't have bailed out there any quicker. Who's going to be the debuting star here on its... Okay. There's a little different to what we'd normally see. Well, this is the debut of Alberto Del Rio, who has his very own ring announcer, becoming a part of the SmackDown roster, evidently. Has the misfortune of having to face off against The Undertaker. And by the matter of minutes, he was being booed. <laughs> be interesting to see what kind of a match The Undertaker and Alberto Del Rio can have. I feel like these are going to be two very different styles colliding. Okay. John Cena, obviously, that's the thing. Undertaker's going to need eyes in the back of his head during this one because John Cena seems to have it out for The Undertaker. And Oh, my God. I was going to say, don't underestimate The Undertaker right now. That guy is... He's hes fuming. Del Rio couldn't have had a worse night to have had to have been told not only was he going to have to face The Undertaker, but he was going to have to uh, face an Undertaker who just had that happen to him. I think it's going to be really impressive if Del Rio can get it. Oh, hold up a second. Here comes Cena. And John Cena. I don't quite know what to make of this. Maybe trying to suck up to The Undertaker. Trying to work on his side and say, hey, let's make peace. I don't think it's going to be quite that simple. What do you think Alberto Del Rio needs to do now? Out here. I, I, I think I see exactly through what John Cena was just trying to do there. I just don't think that's going to work. Undertaker didn't even try just you know, stealing the pin, going right with what John Cena had handed him. He just carried on wrestling. He said, absolutely not. I'm not going to work on your side, John. Obviously, as I say, I think John, I think John Cena's just been stricken with fear after what happened earlier tonight. Really, really unusual thing to see here, though. Someone trying to brown nose the Undertaker as if that's going to work. What is it? Well, some people would say his kindness could be his weakness. He does a lot of charity, does Alberto Del Rio. Del Rio countered that nicely. Fever pitches here in the WWE universe. This is really not a good night for Alberto Del Rio. Something tells me it's about to go from bad to worse. Last ride by The Undertaker. Oh, as if that wasn't enough. Two 
tombstone. Undertaker's Undertaker with a last ride and a tombstone staring up at the entryway in which we just saw two, Cena come from. Very, very clear intention of warning there. I don't think John Cena's attempts to suck up to The Undertaker have worked at all. <clears throat> well, speaking of John Cena, he will be in our main event next. And, oh, well, of course. It just wasn't enough, was it? Once again, I mean, at least now we know what happened in the parking lot. We've seen it firsthand. Back here for our main event on SmackDown, which apparently has been made a contenders match for the WWE title. Very last second, but sudden change here. I'm not quite sure what got into Teddy Long, but he's decided to make this a contenders match for the WWE title. I think he likes the drama that's surrounding this whole situation right now, and he just kind of wants to capitalize on it. So The Rock, who uh, was screwed out of an Intercontinental Championship opportunity against The Miz, really sticking it to The Miz as well, which I guess, you know, that's very much Teddy Long's style. He's really got it out for The Miz fits. Um, but he's sticking up the Miz by saying, you know, you cheat in your match, I'm not going to reward you, but I'm going to reward your opponent who you cheated against by putting him in an even bigger title thing, something that you wanted. So if The Rock can beat John Cena tonight, he'll be facing Christian for the WWE title at Over the Limit. But there's one man who's been surrounded all over SmackDown tonight, and the fans' feelings towards him have really changed. looking real confident after attacking The Undertaker earlier on is not something that a lot of people would dare to do but it didn't come without you know a little bit of head games from him first to his face all friendly behind his back he'll strike him with a steel pole if he has to tell you what John Cena can absolutely not be trusted there's the bell, and here we go to determine the next number one contender. I think The Undertaker would be livid if John Cena won this matchup. Nothing The Undertaker would hate more than to see John Cena get that title opportunity that he screwed The Undertaker out of. Now, admittedly, this is a bit of a double-edged thing, and you can really side with whoever you think is more deserving of, I guess, your side. Because, uh, realistically, this all roots back to when The Undertaker actually attacked John Cena before a contender's match. Cena says this has been nothing but retribution. Of course, The Rock, though. Looking like a changed man after last man standing against The Miz. Cut all his hair off. Put on a hell of a lot of muscle. Got a giant arm piece on his... <laughs> What is it with these wrestlers and getting tattoos within the span of, you know, less than a week? They all just go out and get them together? Fun little fact for anybody that's curious, other than the Stone Cold match, the game actually booked everything on uh, Raw, NXT, and SmackDown this week. Come to win through grit and determination. This is actually a contender's match. I just wanted, wanted to try and find a way for it to make sense as one. I had the John Cena Undertaker thing planned for about a couple weeks now. Rock. Ooh. Remember, momentum in the WWE can turn on a dime. This is a really interesting matchup. Two of SmackDown's finest going at each other in the SmackDown main event to determine who will get Christian at over the limit for the WWE title. Neither of these The Undertaker, who I think rightfully should be in contention for the WWE title. I have to say, that I'm a little bit outraged about. 
I don't think that it was fair of The Undertaker to be screwed this much. Even Shawn Michaels, he got an opportunity against Christian earlier tonight, and I'm sure if he had won, there would have been some kind of justice for uh, Shawn Michaels made there. Some kind of move to give him a WWE title opportunity in the future, as he could have beaten Christian at Extreme Rules. Interestingly enough, no sign of the Misfits tonight, something I was definitely expecting. Once again, you are watching WWE on Network TV. This is Friday Night SmackDown. John Cena, of course, is made of flesh and blood. I like really respect the amount of uh, competition we're seeing between these two. Say two of SmackDown's finest, I'll say it, I'll say it again. There's unquestionably something special about John Cena. Okay, what should Cena be looking for now? Oh, but get to the neck of Cena's. And don't forget, Cena has sustained a career threat. It's really interesting to see these two face off, actually. Is to test that neck again here tonight. Almost feels like it could be a, a, a dream match that probably wouldn't turn out very good. Cover attempt by The Rock. Maybe this will be enough to get the job done. No. Be interesting to see if The Undertaker makes any kind of appearance in a main event tonight. I suppose maybe that's another reason why John Cena took him out with the steel pipe. Just to try and make sure that there is no involvement from The Undertaker when it comes to this main event match. Make sure that he's, he's got all the bases covered to ensure that he can maybe beat The Rock just one on one. And right now, he's absolutely laying into The Rock. John Cena's ground game is always to the point. Cena. He anticipated that move perfectly. Whether you cheer the corner he goes and right. more emotion out of our fans than anybody in WWE history. You know, I think the entire WWE universe likes Cena. They like to have fun with it. it. Sounds so delusional when they say that. Fever pitch is here in the WWE universe. Whoa, he's measuring Spinebuster. The Rock delivers a massive Spinebuster. The Rock gets the Spinebuster off on John Cena, drops him center of the ring. Down goes the elbow. I mean, away goes the elbow pad even. And there it is, the people's elbow. Is that going to be enough to put away John Cena? Not even slightly. Not fast enough. Since 2002, John Cena has been electrifying crowds like he is here tonight. Look at Cena go. Really interested in seeing if there's ever any follow-up between The Rock and The Miz fits, or if that was just kind of a one-and-done situation. And I'm sure The Miz would like it to be that way, as he inches ever so much closer to Day 200 as Intercontinental Champion. I don't even think we've had another champion that's gone past 100, and you got The Miz over there with the Intercontinental title at almost 200 days. Of course, he's going to have a new contender determined for him sometime soon, over the limit is, I believe, just two weeks away. At least in the game calendar, there's two weeks until it. Two more episodes of SmackDown, and then it, I meant by that, not literally like it's this week included. Two weeks from Sunday. John Cena, top rope. Five knuckle shuffle. The Rock made sure to move out of the way. Look at this, look at this. Damn good move, too. That probably would have, uh, done its number on the rock and the people's champ decides it's time to talk a little smack look out oh look at this maybe this will be enough john cena attitude adjustment his shoulders are down One, two, three. and that's it cena wins. that was cena enough wins. john cena is headed to over the limit where he's going to get a wwe championship opportunity against christian Undertaker must be livid. This has just been John Cena's night here on SmackDown. The Rock was bested for sure. The fans hate every second of it. Wow. 
John Cena roars to the crowd as they roar back with booze. The number one contender for the WWE title has been decided. And what the hell? <laughs> I guess that's revenge for earlier. Del Rio getting a little involved here. Obviously, he didn't appreciate John Cena laying his hands on him during his match with The Undertaker. It's a very interesting retribution and a very strong debut to have made. Wow. Oh, I don't usually record this part. Oh, well, I mean, I accidentally segued into it, so I guess I'm doing it now. I just won't show the rankings, because that spoils stuff. Um, but uh, that that's it for this week's episode of SmackDown. So, um, I can't show you what will come up in the next week's Raw, because it might be a spoiler for someone that's going to debut. So, sorry, but I'm going to have to just close it out here. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, as I said before, what I meant by that was that's how long we've got until Over the Limit. Just to clarify that at the very least. That's how long we've got until Over the Limit. I think there's actually a week I've got to skip on the calendar to get the correct date. So... A bunch of champions are going to get a bonus seven days on their title reigns. Well done to them, I guess. I'll see you guys in the next episode, though, as uh, we go to week two here of W12 with Monday Night Raw. See you guys then. Bye.